welcome to our meeting. There you go, recording has started. As I mentioned, I am Karen Good with the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, and this is the Northeast Downtown Five Points Action Plan meeting. Um, and if you expected to be on a plane to New Orleans, you are in the wrong place and we're so sorry. Please, please uh, disembark the plane. And for those of you that are joining us to uh, talk about Northeast Downtown and Five Points, welcome. Thanks so much. We've got a great crew of folks here with us tonight. Um, so we're going to jump in and talk a little bit more about um, what we're going to do tonight. For participation, we've put everyone on mute. It's not that we don't wanna hear from you. We wanna hear uh, lots from you. We will pause periodically for questions and discussions. So please um, wait for those moments to speak. And if you have something that you really need to share with the group or get out before you forget it, that's what the chat is for. Pop that in. Um, as you know, the meeting is being recorded. The chat gets recorded as well. We'll be monitoring that and I'll work to bring up those questions in the Q&A if you don't. And um, if there's something that we can answer through the chat, we'll do that prior to hitting the Q&A. So just wanted to let folks know that that's how we're, that's how we're set up for this meeting. And want to jump into a little bit more. Um, as I said, I'm Karen Good. We also have Brett Boncori and Riley Lemie here. We'll, we'll be tag teaming so you don't get too bored of any of us. Um, keep you on your toes, keep switching it up and keeping you entertained. That's, uh, that's what we're here for, to entertain you, keep you informed, and ideally give you an opportunity to inform us as well. This is a working meeting and uh, we'll be we'll be trying to get a lot of input from you, not just not necessarily just during this meeting, but after this meeting. So with that, we're going to jump in a little bit more into a little bit more detail of uh, what we're covering tonight. Obviously, uh, we're so happy that you're here. Um, we're we're welcoming you now, and we'll jump into the meeting purpose in just a second. Uh, We'll go over our current and recent projects, and that's when we'll have, uh, after we've presented that, we'll have our first opportunity for Q&A. Then we'll go through the action plan prioritization process, and then jump into letting you know how you provide your input on the prioritization and have a Q&A there. And then we'll wrap up with the next steps and our timeline. So, Riley is the master of our slides here. I do want to introduce a very special guest and that is Elbra Wedgworth. Many of you know her. Um, her fame runs far and wide and she's going to uh, say a few words. So with that, Elbra. Thank you, Karen. That's a very kind of you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Elbra Wedgworth and I am so pleased to welcome you to attend the community meeting tonight. And I wish to thank all of the community members for being here. As we know, your time is very valuable. Special thanks to those who have been involved in this point, and we greatly appreciate all of the input that the team has received. The five points and Northeast downtown neighborhoods are important to all of us. The planning efforts that have already been done in these neighborhoods, along with the historic designation efforts, which many of you are familiar with, are ongoing legacy for our community. This, I feel, along with you, is a magnificent opportunity to actually implement infrastructure and to invest in the cultural renaissance and five points and to have all the partners at the table to help make that decision. As you'll see tonight from the following presentation, we together will have both short-term and long-term investment in five points in Northeast downtown neighborhoods, and we'll make this a reality. I know a lot of us have been waiting for this for a long time, and I really feel that this team will be able to make that happen. So let us know if you have any questions leading up to tonight and uh, whether you can, want to think about it and also get back with us in, uh, in the future, please do. This is an open process, and we do want to respect and encourage your input. So thank you very much. And again, thank you for being here, and I'll turn it back over to Karen. 
Thanks so much, Elbra. And thank you so much for being engaged in this process. It's been really wonderful and amazing to work with you again. Elbra and I um, share a long history at the city um, and um, so wonderful to work together again. So uh, again, we're gonna dive into a little bit of uh, more detail on the purpose as uh, Elbro mentioned, Five Points Northeast Downtown Action Plan is really critical and a, a priority from our mayor. And it's, we're really creating a multi-year phased infrastructure investment program here in the neighborhood. Uh, this is a partnership between the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, as well as the Economic Development Office. Um, this is an important, we find a lot of opportunity when we partner between departments to really find a bit more energy and a bit more excitement about projects and, and with that also a bit more funding often. So we have a bit more horsepower behind things. So that's very exciting. Um, we've been working collaboratively internally to the city and have been reaching out to the community. And this is the opportunity to get your input on how to prioritize existing city funds to move forward with additional infrastructure improvements in the neighborhood. And Riley's doing his magic here. Uh, where we're talking about, this is where many of you live, work, and play. This is informed by the Northeast Downtown Neighborhood Next Step Study from 2015. It takes the five points a statistical neighborhood and expands it just a couple blocks um, there to the east, if you will. So uh, extending to Lafayette and just getting a little bit uh, beyond the, st the statistical neighborhood boundary. Um, and many of you I know were involved in that next step study, so are familiar with conversation around that, but it's really to capture the, both sides of the downing corridor and just off of it so that you get that energy from the corridor and the context. The um, other plans that this has come through, some of you know that um, I, uh, hate to look at the year, but in 2007 worked on the Curtis Park Neighborhood Assessment. Um, and so it's really wonderful to be back here and continuing to realize some of the visions that were laid out in that neighborhood assessment, as well as 38th and Blake Station Area Plan. Uh, as I mentioned, the um, Northeast Downtown Neighborhood Study, uh, which was 2011, and then the next steps piece of that study, which was 2015. Uh, many of you were more recently engaged in the NTMP um, action plan from 2019. We're going to go over some of the elements of that a little bit later. And the Denver Moves Downtown plan from 2021. So this is an effort to pull together all the ideas from all of these different plans that we're building upon each other already and look at how we can pull out the things that have been done already, celebrate those, and then consolidate and coordinate efforts in moving forward and prioritizing under this Northeast Downtown and Five Points Action Plan. And with that, uh, current and recent projects, I'm gonna hand the mic, if you will, to Brett. And I will, as I said, I will keep monitoring the chat and we'll work to get you ready for the Q&A coming up. Great, thanks, Karen. Um, like Karen said, my name is Brett Boncori. I'm, I'm with the Department of Transportation Infrastructure and the Transportation Design Group. And so, as Karen noted, I just we just wanted to give a quick overview of the projects that have already been completed in the Five Points in Northeast Downtown neighborhoods. Um, as as she mentioned, there's been a ton of studies and plans that have recommended projects all over this area. So while this isn't necessarily the main subject of our meeting tonight, we just wanted to give an overview of those that either have been installed or will be installed very soon and have a life of their own. Um, so what you're seeing here are just a few examples of the work that's already been done to date. Many of us should be familiar with these, <laughs> this infrastructure um, in the Five Points in Northeast downtown neighborhoods. Uh, you can read all these, but just to kind of call out a few, uh, we've, com we've completed a couple um, one way to two way conversions in the neighborhood. Uh, most notably, you have Blake Street and Walnut Street, which uh, we've converted from, um, to two way between Broadway and Downing. Um, also, here we're calling out uh, 40 operational and safety projects that have already been installed 
as a result of the five points NTMP action plan that Karen mentioned earlier. These projects are smaller projects, but still significant. They range from new all-way stops to new crosswalks to improved visibility at intersections and some signal timing adjustments and things like that. Those have already been completed. And again, there's over about 40 of those. And then of course, I just wanted to call out, you know, here there's a large, uh, this is a larger one, but of course 36th Street Pedestrian Bridge, which came out of the 38th and Blake Station um, next step study. So a lot of good stuff that's already been done. Now going to the next slide, um, we wanted to highlight a couple of projects that are already planned, have funding moving forward, already have design associated with them and are being installed very soon. Um, all these projects that I'll be talking about that are coming at the end of like this year uh, came out of our five points in TMP as well, the Neighborhood Transportation Management Program. Sorry, didn't, uh, didn't, didn't define that previously. And so these things uh, include things like, uh, the, the, these projects include things like painted bulb outs along both um, Stout and Champa Street, uh, pedestrian flashing signals. We also call those um, rectangular rapid flashing beacons or, or RRFBs. Uh, another example would be back in angled parking along Curtis Park and the Cito Curtis Park to increase new parking spaces and to slow down vehicular traffic on that particular block. Um, the next slide. Um, in addition, um, the NTMP also recommended two other projects that are particularly along the Welton Street corridor that will be implemented later this year and we wanted to highlight. Um, the first up top is an expanded pedestrian plaza at the Five Points intersection. So this is at the intersection of Welton Street, 27th Street, 26th Ave, and Washington Street. This is the heart of Five Points. And what this will look to do is reallocate some of that current pavement space to be additional pedestrian space, really expanding the plaza that's already there uh, with paint and post. Um, and what this does is, is it, yes, it's a safety project. It decreases pedestrian crossing distances, looking to slow down vehicular traffic, turn, both turning movements and through movements in this area. And it will provide space for a street mural and actually art uh, and additional opportunities for community activation and placemaking. And so we're actually in the, uh, the process right now of, of, of procuring an artist to be able, through a selective process, to be able to install this street mural that, um, you know, that, that artist uh, is to be from the Five Points community or have a meaningful tie to the Five Points community and the piece of art that we're looking to do would be a cultural, historic, historically significant piece of art that'd be installed in that street mural. And then in addition, kind of moving to the bottom of this slide, we'll also be installing um, paint and post bulb outs at select intersections along Welton Street. Um, these bulb outs are similar to those if you've seen, if you've been over in the Santa Fe Drive area recently over in Loma Lincoln Park, as shown in this uh, kind of photo here. Um, much the same as the Five Points Plaza project, um, but on a smaller scale, these projects are, these bulb outs are intended to slow down traffic and proactively improve pedestrian, pedestrian safety at these four locations. And so having gone through kind of um, already completed projects and, and some that are coming soon, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Karen to field any additional questions that we've had in the chat, if there are any. Karen, do you wanna go ahead and read some out if there are any? Absolutely. Really, all we have so far in the chat, and I shouldn't say all we have, but what we have so far in the chat is not a question, but a uh, note about excitement that the uh, some of the, the point plaza work is on the imminent completion list. So that's wonderful. Um, and I am just, I've, if you see me looking down, that's because I'm looking down at my double zoom screen here, I'm looking down at my phone. And if somebody else would like to uh, ask a question, please raise your hand or put something in chat so that we can unmute you and give you an opportunity to ask a question. And I am looking down the list and if you're on camera, I can't see everyone all at once, but if you're on camera and you feel the need to wave frantically, um, I can look for that as well. Uh, it looks like, is it Walisha? Uh, we will get you unmuted. Yes. yes. And uh, let me know if I am pronouncing your name correctly. Yes, you did. Thank you for doing yeah. that. <laughs> mess it up. Great. Well, just jump in with your question. 
Well, the questions I have to this project, and it was kind of introduced to me earlier this year, more or less on the scale of the mural and mm -hmm. the significance of what it was going to represent. Uh, after further review of your last meeting notes back in July, what this looks like to me is that with the pedestrian uh, safety study of putting a, a point plaza, you're going to cut off 26 in Clarkson going to Welton. That now puts in jeopardy one business, uh, the Courtesy Auto. Then with this initiative, it's also going to cut off access to the last original business that still stands in the community, and that's uh, Franklin's Barbershop. So where would this be more uh, beneficial to those uh, individuals? And are they going to have to just close up? And the reason I ask that with the close up, um, this is hard to talk about. Number one, I am a descendant of Zona Moore. Uh, start there. Uh, 11 years ago, I stood in the midst of what used to be and no longer is. And here we are presented with a project. Number one, there's the pros and the cons of it. And the pros of it would be to highlight uh, you know, a community that no longer stands, but also made Denver what it is. Uh, as a citizen, I, every day I'm watching it being torn from what it used to be. Uh, Denver has always had a beautiful light from the north side to Park Hill to the south side downtown. I have an array of friends I've never lived somewhere else that wasn't so diverse and so accepting. I have lived in another state and it wasn't so accepting of me. So I came home. I've been back 16 years, uh, but it just doesn't sound like it's going to preserve what is still there. And yeah. I'm just trying to figure out is that the the goal here and is it permanent that this is going forward well those are all there was a lot packed up in in i'm sorry no you're perfect you're utterly perfect so i'm gonna hand it to brett but i'm gonna give um a couple highlights and i'm gonna look to you on camera to see if i got it right you have some questions about the design of the plaza and what will be happening at 26 and Clarkson. So Brett can talk to you a little bit and some other folks popped in some questions on the chat about that as well. So we'll go into detail of what the design is doing and not doing. And then you had some other questions and comments about the murals and what they'll be doing. So um, I think Brett can answer most of those, but please let us know. I'm going to hand it to him. He's going to Bring up a graphic that will help explain what's happening where and and how things work a bit um we'll be probably looking i think at a plan view where you can yeah. see where traffic will move through um and where some of the murals are intended and whatnot so let us know um if what we provide doesn't answer the question and then i will stick a sock in it and let brett go into some detail and then i'm gonna look at chat too while Brett's explaining. Sounds good, thanks Karen. Riley, would you mind going up to the, um, going back up to the design? Apologize, it's really, really uh, small here. But kind of to your to your question, Alicia, about um, 26th, uh, the question of, is it actually closing off 26th Ave or, or Clarkson Street? Um, this project is not restricting any access to 26th Ave or Clarkson Street. All of the movements that you can do now for, so basically turning to go east on 26th Ave or go west on 26th Ave or any of the movements that you can do now, you will still be able to do. Um, 
I think originally you might what you might be talking about was the original design. I will say the initial design did have um, converting this to one way uh, on 26th Ave going into the Welton Street intersection. But kind of to your point uh, about courtesy auto and all the access that is to the east of here, all the access is down 26th Ave. We actually were able to tweak some things in the design to make sure that we were keeping access in both ways. So it will continue to be uh, two directions on 26th Ave and won't be just a one way that the initial design um, showed. Um, and Brett, I'm gonna just, we've had a couple of questions on chat come up about whether you can make right turns from Washington or Welton onto 26. Yes. So again, what you're saying is, yep. Yes. The movements yep. that you can make today, you'll still be able to make in the future. Yep. And for, for Washington, you'll just have to, instead of turning directly on the, like, um, basically you'll just have to go around what is now the raised island there through the intersection and around. Um, but you can still do that movement and still access all of those businesses along there in the same way um, that you would now, so. Okay, and then as far as the two-way intersection of Welton, um, why would that be and where would that start? Would that start from 30th and Downing? and going all the way into downtown or how is that going to be converted? Um, I'm just, so just, uh, I, I, um, I'm not sure. So this, this specific project at, is only at the five points intersection. And then if you're, if you're kind of referring to the bulb out, the projects kind of the, the bottom right here, 24th, 25th, 26th and 20, 27th and 29th, these are actually projects that aren't the same thing there. They're not restricting any vehicular movements that can currently happen today. Okay. Uh, what these projects to, are, are doing is actually just putting these paint and post type improvements that you see in the photo in areas that are already no parking. Okay. Um, so and that it, it ensures that you'll have good visibility at the intersection okay. and actually will decrease pedestrian crossing distances there too. Karen, was there something you wanted to add there? Yeah, I was just going to say, if if a street is currently one way, it is staying one way. If it's currently two way, it's staying two way. Okay, sounds good. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, and then um, we do have some other questions hopping up in chat. Um, I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. So Brett, I'm gonna to toss this to you, but have you considered extending the Welton bike lane from downtown through five points? Um, so that's the big question. And the design consideration is uh, reducing the car lane to one lane to allow bikes to continue. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a question that has come up. Wanna to toss that your way? Sure, yeah. And I think that actually has a lot to do with uh, the next part of our meeting, um, but because that actually uh, a well, so um, as as Karen kind of previewed earlier, the bulk of our meeting is actually going to be spent prioritizing future projects, um, and one of the projects is a Welton Street lane reduction. Um, now, I, I will say that project right now is currently uh, seen as just adding in back end angle parking to reduce the lanes, but um, there could be potential to look at what that extra space could be used as if it's a bike lane or what have you. Um, as a note, um, some, some folks might, um, might have noticed Welton Street, kind of further down into downtown, not in the Five Points area, was recently converted to two-way uh, for two blocks uh, through a development project. That will be extended up to Broadway, but it won't necessarily hit into the Five Points neighborhood with that project. Um, again, that will, the, the lane, Wilton Street Lane Reduction Project through Five Points will be one of the projects that we're asking you all, it will be on the list of projects that we're asking you all to prioritize um, later in this meeting. So good question. Yeah, and with that, I think we've got a lot of questions about future projects in the area related to Welton, to Walnut, and I am thinking of protected bike lane on Stout. 
I am thinking what we might want to do in interest of giving, making sure that there's opportunity to get through some of the information that we have about prioritizing future projects. I think we might want to stop the Q&A right now and give our, ourselves a little bit more time to share some of the future project ideas with you. So that, and then we'll get back to Q&A after that so that we can um, see if you still have questions after we've presented a bit more information. Um, I can't see everyone's face, but I'm hoping that will work so that we make sure not to shortchange you on the explanation of how to prioritize uh, future projects and to provide input on any future projects that we have not identified. So I'm going to go with that. And if you don't like that idea, put it in the chat and there we go. So with the action plan prioritization, I am going to toss it to Riley and we will, um, as I said, I'll keep monitoring chat and we'll dive into any of the questions that aren't answered um, at our next Q and A. Still tonight. All right, thanks, Karen. Hi, everyone. My name is Riley Lamy. I'm with Body. Um, I am a city planner in the planning division of the transportation department. So thanks again for joining us tonight. So Karen and Brett did a great job of kind of describing where we've been so far with all of the various planning processes that have occurred in the past. A lot of these plans have generated great ideas that have come from you as, um, as a community members. These projects have all worked to identify different projects for infrastructure in the area. Um, and again, that has all been through, through community input. And Brett and Karen described some of those projects that have already gotten built um, and where are going to be built in the near future. And where we're at now is looking at where, how do we move forward next? So in other words, what is the next round or the next phase of projects that the city should be moving forward with, um, both in the near term as well as in the long term? And so that's really what we want to hear from you tonight and why we need your input is to help us be able to prioritize those projects. So tonight you'll hear me talk about near-term projects and then you'll hear me also talk about long-term projects. So near-term ones are ones that are, tend to be smaller projects that can be funded or advanced um, with a relatively low budget as, and on a relatively quick timeline. So think about the next, between now and the next couple of years, those are near-term projects. Um, and we also happen to have, thanks to our partnership between DOTI and the Denver Office of Economic Development, or DITO for short, we have an opportunity that has provided us with a little bit of funding to continue to or start thinking about how we're moving forward with those next round of near-term projects. Longer-term projects are ones that we don't quite have the funding for and are more complex and are gonna take us more time to get the funding. But, but it is important that through this process, we establish from you as the community, what are, how, how we should be advancing these or what should we start with first? And so in other words, hearing from you, what, what is the most important? What are, what are your priorities for us to be moving forward with? So I'm gonna start talking about, kind of just give some examples of some near-term projects. And so as I mentioned before, these are again, projects that can be funded and advanced over the next two years. Um, but we don't have funding usually at any one point to be able to do everything that's on this map. So that the, the map that you're seeing here shows some examples of near-term projects that were recommended from all of those previous plans and community efforts that we've talked about uh, before. So that's why we need your help telling us which ones that you think are the most important or the ones that we should be moving forward with first. And I'll walk through some examples of what a near-term project will look like in just a minute. But you can see on the map that I have on the screen, um, it's just kind of showing how these projects are spread out. Um, and some examples of them are doing crossing improvements at Broadway, which is something that was identified from the Denver Moves Downtown Plan. And something that we've been hearing a lot from the community is, is something that they would like to see as a priority, but also additional improvements on Welton Street, such as planting new street trees or adding new infrastructure that really helps uh, to add landscaping to the street. There's also um, 
public art that you not, don't see displayed on the map, but the opportunity to think about how can we add um, public art or pedestrian wayfinding that makes it easier to navigate the neighborhood. So those are the kinds of things that typically are lower cost for us to be able to do that we could move forward with on a near-term basis. So just an example of um, a project I mentioned, crossing improvements at Broadway. This is an example of something that we could do potentially over the next two years uh, by designing and constructing with lower cost materials and would be done with the intention of making Broadway feel more comfortable and safe to cross. So things that we could do are adding um, curb extensions or you'll sometimes hear us call them bulb outs. It's sort of the, the engineering term for those things. Um, but that are designed to slow down vehicles and make it so that it is uh, safer and more comfortable to cross the street. And you may also see us or recommend uh, median islands, which do the same thing. They work to slow down traffic, provide a safer place to cross and shorten the distance that pedestrians have to cross the street. So again, this is an example of a, a near-term project. And in just a minute, I'll kind of, I'll be showing you the map that shows all of those projects and what they look like. Um, another example that I mentioned earlier is uh, doing wayfinding throughout the Five Points neighborhood. So pedestrian wayfinding that helps you be able to quickly recognize some of the important destinations within the neighborhood and be able to help pedestrians navigate to those spaces. Then we have the other end of the spectrum, which is longer term things. And so these are things that, as I mentioned before, are take a little bit more time either because of their complexity or because they have a much higher budget assigned to them. So some examples of that are in previous plans there was a, there has been recommendations to build additional pedestrian bridges over the railroad tracks. Um, as you can imagine that has a, a much larger price tag associated with it and so these are things that would take us more time to secure the funding needed to move forward with those but we still want to hear from you what are your priorities with some of these longer term, more complex projects. And so we'll be asking about those as well. Um, an example of a long term project that I'll go over is, and this is a project that came out of the recently completed Denver Moose downtown plan, is realigning the intersection of 20th and Lincoln Street. Um, there's a where Lincoln Street and 20th merge together. I'm looking at realigning that intersection and signal so that it's more of a straightforward grid and provides a, an additional place to cross that is actually signalized um, right there. So that, that is one example of a longer term project, again, that uh, would take us a little bit more time just because of the, to, to secure funding because uh, signals are expensive. So you'd have to get, gather the funding for that. But again, it is important to hear what, what those priorities are so that way we can make sure that we're um, making the appropriate budget asks in the future and, and getting those things to move forward. So that leads us to the next part of the presentation. And I'm actually going to switch off of the presentation and into my internet browser here. Um, and this is the, the part where we're gonna ask you to help us prioritize what those uh, projects are. Um, and actually, before I do that, let me, let me go back to where I was. Um, so in this, in just a moment, we're going to be going to something that is called the, uh, it's called social pinpoint. And that's a special tool that we're going to be using to, um, to help us be able to hear from you about how we should prioritize these projects. And give me just a second to go back to where I was. All right, apologies for that. So this website, and we'll, we'll put this in the chat so that everyone can access it, but in just a moment, I'll be walking you through or kind of demonstrating how to use this tool. This is a, a, a special tool that will help us or help it actually will be for you to tell us how we should be prioritizing these projects. And so this will help us to hear from you. Um, and the website for that is bit.ly forward slash NEDFP dash survey. So again, bit.ly forward slash NEDFP dash survey. And that is a tool that we'll be demonstrating in just a moment that, uh, again, is how you'll be telling us how these projects should be prioritized. So when you first open that page um, on, in, a, in a separate window on an internet browser, 
you'll notice that there are a lot of projects that are listed on that website that all have different letters associated with them. If you click on one of those letters, and so you can see on my screen how I, there's a B, an I, a C. So all of those, um, all of those little symbols on the screen actually represent a project. And you can click on those to, to find out more information about a particular project. So for example, if I click on I, it brings up Broadway Crossing Improvements, which is one of the, the examples that I mentioned earlier. Um, and so that, that's how we'll be able to find out more information about these next batch of projects that we're trying to prioritize. On the side, there's also a survey, and that survey is has all of the projects that, uh, that are listed, and they match up with the corresponding letter on the screen. And there's the ability to be able to rank them. So if, let's say that Project J was your favorite project or your most important thing, you'll be able to rank that at the top. And let's say there was a project that is the least important to you, you'll be able to put that at the bottom. So this survey is how we're is, is uh, how you're going to be able to rank the projects. And so with that, now I'm actually going to switch back to the, to the web page that, so I can actually demonstrate that live and show you how to do that. And um, right or Karen, I just want to confirm that you can see that on my screen. So seeing a thumbs up. So when you first go to that, that web page that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, this is what it's going to look like when you first start. So it has a little bit of information about what this process is and why we're doing it. And that way, if you are sharing this with your uh, with other people in your community or your neighbors, they will get the same information that uh, you're getting tonight or a very abbreviated version of that. So I'm going to click uh, get started now. and. Just as I described earlier, you'll see all of the projects that are highlighted through the various letters. Um, all of the projects that are in blue on my screen correspond with this very first question. So you'll see on here, it says, please rank the following near-term projects from your highest to lowest priority. So how you'll be able to find more information out about each project is again, as I mentioned, just clicking on it it will bring up more information about what that project is, as well as a photo example. And I'll click on a few more just so you can kind of see some examples of, of what those look like. Um, this is project E, which is called Honorary Street Signs. And um, so again, the project description or what that means is listed here. And then we try to include some photo examples so that it helps provide a visual of what that might look like. Um, and then I'll click, I'll, Click on one more just for fun so you can kind of see. So again, this was the, the Five Points Public Art Project. You can um, see the description below here uh, that is mentioned. Some of these projects I do want to mention correspond to a, a very specific location, and that's listed in the description. And some of them are meant to be highlighted or included neighborhood-wide. So the public art one that I just mentioned, you'll notice that the D is placed in one spot on the map, but it actually it actually is intended to be for the entire neighborhood. So in the descriptions themselves, it'll actually tell you the location and whether that's meant to be a part of a specific location or meant to be um, a project that would be installed throughout the neighborhood. So as you're taking the survey, you'll notice this little on to the left of the screen, this says survey right here. Again, that's where it's actually asking the question about how you want to prioritize. Um, if you want to prioritize a project, you'll just simply move your favorite project or your top project up to the top. So let's say that um, the pedestrian wayfinding was my most important project. I would just grab that with the mouse and move that up to Oops, move that up to the top. Um, and then if a project is lower on your priority list, uh, you can move that down to the bottom. Um, and what that's going to do is tell us from the community's perspective, which projects are the most important and which ones are uh, kind of the, or the least prioritized. Um, and we'll be reporting back sometime either this winter um, or this fall or winter, um, we'll be having another community meeting to share the results of this, this survey. So we do encourage you to take it as well as share this with your neighbors 
So that way we are hearing from as many voices in the community as possible. Um, and then the next question here, there's another question that asks if you uh, ranked there. One of the questions that's on here is asking about additional crossing improvements on Broadway. Um, and this, this question is basically saying, if this was an important project to you or you ranked it as one of your top projects, which intersection is the most important um, from a priority standpoint that we should be improving. Uh, then moving on, the next part of this is you'll, the letters that are shown here in gray, these are the longer term projects. And so then the next question is, please rank the long term projects from your highest to lowest priority. Um, again, you can see it's the same thing that you can simply um, drag the projects in your kind of preferred order, um, starting with your most important one on the top and your the one that you would like to prioritize the least, putting that on the bottom. Um, and that will, again, when that survey is submitted, that will tell us and give us a, an idea of what are the top priorities and the least, uh, least important priorities. And then just a couple of other things to note that we have some other questions that are included as a part of the survey. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to provide your email in case you have uh, additional questions. I do wanna to note too that if there are questions, you can uh, say that you're having technical issues with the website or having um, questions about that. You can email this uh, neighborhood.mobility at denvergov.org, which will provide some um, information about how to uh, use the site so we can, if, if there's any technical issues there, we're happy to troubleshoot you with that. Um, and then on this next step, it does also mention that this sur particular survey will be open from September 30th to 25 of this year. So we're giving about a month for everyone to be able to take the survey. And then as next steps, as I discussed earlier, we will be going back to share how, we're, how the results of the survey and um, summarize what we heard from you tonight. So with that, um, I'm gonna pause there and just in case there's sort of any technical questions about um, how, you know, about this process or how this works. Um, so I'm gonna hand it back to Karen. Actually, I'm gonna, I think Brett's gonna summarize some next steps and then we'll, we'll pause for questions. So uh, Brett, and I'll hand it back to you. Thanks. Riley, thanks much. I'm gonna um, make a couple announcements before Brett goes into some of the next steps. Uh, one of the big things that people have had a couple questions about, and you might've seen it in the chat, will this uh, meeting information be available? Yes, it will. Um, the, if you go through the chat and we'll go through it at the end um, in just a minute uh, with the website where you can direct your friends and neighbors to check out this uh, PowerPoint, and also obviously we have the bit.ly for prioritization and then the, and yep, thanks so much, Riley, um, as well as the um, information on how you can email us if you have any problems there. Those links are in the chat uh, multiple times over, but I wanted to jump to that. So then I'm going to let Brett go over some of this information, and then I'm going to toss a couple questions his way from the chat, and then we'll get some more questions um, out there. Uh, but I want to hit the, the old ones first. So Brett? Sounds yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Karen. And, um, and what we'll do after we go through this, uh, we're actually going to give some time for folks that are on this call right now to go ahead and go to the survey and, and, help, and fill that out, and we'll be available for questions live here. As, as you do that. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to give a, an overview of next steps, just so that everyone, uh, you know, we're all on the same page as far as uh, uh, where we're going from here. So as Riley mentioned, uh, that public survey that, we're all, that we'll be filling out will be open till September 30th. So a good amount of time, a little more than a month to send to all your friends and neighbors and help us prioritize that project list. From there, Kind of in the October, November timeframe of, of this year, we'll be doing some additional uh, coordination with community stakeholders based on that, that project list, uh, making sure uh, that we have um, good paths forward for each one of these projects. And then we'll finalize and approve that near-term list to move forward. Um, 
And what we're planning to do then is sometime in the winter of 20, uh, uh, this winter basically, uh, we'll be coming back to the community, you all, to present that project list, that finalized project list, and likely some information on how each one of those projects is gonna go from there. Really, each one of these projects is gonna have a life of their own, really, when it comes down to it. And so um, from there, we'll hopefully make it very clear as to how you can be, continue to be involved with those projects. And then obviously 2022 and beyond, we'll be advancing those near-term projects. Again, all those different projects have, have very different lives. You know, Some of them are gonna be quicker than others, um, but that's what we'll be doing in 2022. And um, in addition to reaching out to the community as a whole, as we're doing right now, we, we have established a community advisory group, we call them the CAG. Uh, we will be meeting with them uh, on a regular basis and checking in on these projects as well. And then again, probably checking in with the, the general community as a whole as these projects move forward. Um, so next slide, I think your next one is questions, right, Karen? That is correct. And um, I do want to jump into, we do have two things. We, I wanna uh, go to Q&A and we also have an opportunity for you all to give us feedback on this meeting. Um, the meeting's not over yet, but to give us feedback on how well we've communicated and what we can do to help improve our communication with you all. So um, you can scan this if you have a handy dandy phone right near you. As most of you do, you can just uh, scan the, uh, use your smartphone to scan the QR code and that'll provide feedback and for you to be able to provide feedback and comments specific to this public meeting, but not necessarily about the projects we're talking about. This is really about the process of the public meeting where um, you have questions or comments uh, about using the input tool or about projects. That's the neighborhood mobility at denvergov.org. So neighborhood.mobility at denvergov.org. Um, with that, I want to jump into, we can leave that up, right? Actually, because nobody needs to see the Q and A slide. We'll leave this up so you can uh, provide um, you can do your scanning for the QR code and have that, uh, make sure you jot down or take a picture of that email for neighborhood mobility, uh, neighborhood.mobility at denvergov.org. What we really want to dive into is going through um, some of the questions that were asked. I'm gonna go back to one that was uh, here prior and uh, our first round of Q and A. And that's from Joel with questions about these shorter term improvements and how they uh, will work or not work with some of the longer term vision elements. So Brett, I am once again gonna to toss that to you. Sure, yeah, and I, and I, and I do think, um, it sounds like some of the chat um, has somewhat answered these questions, but we'll answer it here too. So, um, so yeah, Really, the long-term vision on Welton is a, is a long-term vision. And so, um, as you'll see, one of the near-term projects is to study the long-term vision on Welton Street. Um, but the implementation of that is quite far off, depending on what it is, if it's a two-way conversion or things like that. So, we don't want to necessarily wait for those things to happen in order to do improvements on Welton Street, if there are things that we can do in the near term. And so, to answer your question, these near-term improvements that were that were suggest that that are um, up for prioritization in the near-term list, they wouldn't preclude necessarily that longer-term vision um, from coming through if if the study is chosen to, to move forward on that long-term vision. If that makes sense, Joel, I do see your hand up. Maybe um, maybe it sounds like maybe you might want to elaborate on your question a little bit, um, Michelle. If you can. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I think you do understand my my question. Thank you for your answer. Um, I, I am concerned, though. I think I think some small changes like uh, bulb outs, um, lane width reduction, um, etc. Especially if it speaks to safety, pedestrian crossing, etc. Absolutely, uh, minor investments make a difference. Now, uh, the back end angled parking and uh, and that kind of thing is it seems to be the kind of thing that um, 
once done re reconceptualizes people's use of that space gets mm -hmm. them used to parking as a priority and having abundant parking in a way that just sets the stage for more controversy uh, when exploring the vision that's already been outlined in adopted plans so that's specifically my concern and and that back end angled parking is not in any adopted plan it was uh it was something that was apparently brought up by by some number of people in the ntmp uh process um and and jotted down and, and said you know we received this idea from the public but um it's not an idea with much tenure thank you well, i really appreciate that um context there joel um and i think yeah, really appreciate that context. I think uh, that's something really important for us to consider. Uh, if we if the, if we do end up moving forward with a longer term vision quarter study, it may or may not make as much sense to considerably change Welton Street in the near term. So no, I appreciate that. And Brett, I'm gonna circle back. We've had a number of questions in chat about the Walnut Street conversion. Mm. That you know, from a positive standpoint, and we've had a lot of questions through the council office and through neighbors over the past couple of months that Brett has um, been helping with as well. So I wanna just lay out folks asking about, can we, you know, it's slowed traffic down, but with the development, it's really hard to cross for pedestrians. Can we put in some more stops, some stop signs, four-way stops, and then that kind of hinges to need for study of four-way stops throughout the neighborhood, which I think ties into NTMP. So let's hit, Walnut first with timeline for what we're currently doing that's part of the Walnut two-way conversion and then jump into the throughout the neighborhood question. That's good. Yeah, great question on Walnut. So um, yeah, so as, as folks know, Walnut was converted to two-way last September. Um, we, uh, and, and at that time we didn't install, we didn't install any additional traffic control along Wal Walnut Street and that was intentional. Um, what we like to see is after we would like to see, we like to see traffic patterns settle in after the two-way conversion, and then it allows us to study the corridor and see really where these uh, traffic control and crosswalks and all that type of stuff should go. Uh, you'll be happy to know we are actually at the tail end of of that evaluation, um, and actually taking a lot of the input that we received during the Walnut Street study about where traffic control should be. I believe, Ty, you're involved with that uh, quite heavily and a few others on the call here. And so we're actually taking a lot of those comments in addition to actual traffic data analysis now that traffic patterns have settled down, especially due to COVID, our, our, our schedule did get delayed a little bit. We wanted to make sure that we had normal volumes and normal traffic patterns, but that is moving forward. And, and we, we do have a number of always stops um, and crosswalks proposed for Walnut Street. And um, Karen and I actually are working on, um, we need to have a feedback loop with, 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 with a few folks in the area to, to, to report out on that specific project um, about what the, the results of those findings were. Um, so that's coming soon. Coming soon. And, um, we'll, make, we'll be circling back with the council office and then getting that in the council newsletter and using some of our other resources um, to get that out to the community. So um, we've got a lot of uh, mailing lists and email lists. So we'll get that out for folks once we have that squared away and, and ready to go. So more, more soon. Thanks, Brett. Um, and do you want to jump into that larger conversation of four-way stops and throughout the neighborhood and how, how that relates to the NTMP? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of the NTMP and Morgan, we see your hand too. So we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, a lot of the NTMP projects, like we mentioned, a couple of them were always stops. Those NTMP studies, evaluations um, occurred a few years ago now. And we implemented, like I mentioned, over 40 of those kind of operational and safety type projects. We are just now at the point where we're open to like re evaluating more uh, always stop requests. You know, enough time has passed since those evaluations with NTMP that um, we are looking through our regular 311 area engineer efforts um, a little more freshly now that those 40 projects are in, they've been in for a minute. And um, so 
if, if there is any specific requests on those smaller type operational and safety projects, like always stops, like, like crosswalks, signing and striping type things, um, the, the normal, the normal um, channel of 311 is your best bet uh, for, for getting those things installed and evaluated and installed. So. Or pocket gov. You don't have or to pocket call. Gov, yes. You can always just pop it in on your phone through pocket gov. Um, I use pocket gov. Um, I, I work in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure and I use pocket gov. I was uh, on a rare occasion with our city traffic engineer driving to a meeting. I think it was raining. We usually bike um, and a signal was out and we put it in through pocket gov. You know, we don't call somebody. We put it in the same way we ask uh, our community members to. So just FYI. Um, so we have a, uh, Morgan, I think had a, uh, sounds like maybe some follow-up to the Walnut Street questions because uh, I wasn't seeing it, but I heard Brett say, Morgan, that your hand was up. Do you have more uh, questions there? Hey, yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Morgan. Um, I work for Eden's. We're, um, we work in the neighborhood. Um, and just to get some clarity, so the reason why, so this is already in motion, so that's why it's not a part of the survey is that is that so it's it's already being worked on there's really no point in having a survey because it's it's moving forward it's just a matter of getting a few uh, you're, you're referring to walnut right yes yeah yeah yes okay. we, we, we could have listed that as one of those projects that's already moving forward that's not really the subject of this meeting that okay. has of its own already has funding has everything that project is already moving forward and okay. to be clear, that was part of the original Walnut Street. That's part of the work we do when we do a one-way to two-way conversion. There are things that happen after that conversion, as Brett said, where we wait for traffic to normalize. And that, yes, exactly as you said, that's why it's not here because it's part of our process. Hey, okay. Brett, sorry to jump in. Um, it's John at the Rhino Bid. Um, Morgan, This I've been having some conversations with Tom at Eden's. Um, I think, Brett, you owe us a date for a catch up on the locations of those um, stop signs. So please do drop me a line whenever suits and let's get that scheduled. Absolutely. Yep. As I was referring to. Uh, awesome. Work with you. Cool. Thanks. OK, and um, we've got some questions. I think we've hit the four way stop questions, just scrolling through a little bit. Um, I would love, I know Joel, you've got your hand up and just trying to make sure that folks that haven't had a chance to speak have had an opportunity before we circle back. Um, I think we've hit everything related to Walnut. Um, somebody had a note that the stop signs added during the major league baseball all-star game were helpful and should be brought back. Um, that's something that, Brett, I don't know if you have a specific response to that or if that's something that we want to say, you know, that's your opportunity to use Pocket Gov or, or 311 as we normally would. Uh, and I believe that that is also specific to Walnut. I'm okay. Because um, there was some always stops that replaced that Walnut in 27, I believe, uh, that created that intersection into an always stop. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's along with that Walnut Street discussion. Yeah. So if it's Walnut, please hold on putting a three one one or a we've we've got that. But if it's for another location, Sam, please do uh, let us know. So with that, I'm just going to do a quick scroll through uh, for any hands up, and then circle back to you, Joel. Oh, I'm sorry, Alicia does have her hand up. Um, so uh, we'll we'll hit Joel and then Alicia if that works. Yep. Great. And uh, Michelle will unmute you, or you can unmute yourself now, I believe, Joel. Unless that is a stale hand. Oh uh, no! I thought you said somebody else was going first. It's uh, dinner table rules. Everyone gets first before anyone gets seconds. Uh, Alicia already went. So uh, okay. Uh, so, so the, the couple things, um, first, I didn't notice um, the projects identified in the 38th and Blake 
next step study that we're straightening out and rationalizing a lot of the funny intersections from Curtis Park touching Downing. Is that because they're already all in progress or are some of those still pending? Um, and then secondly, um, I didn't see, and I, I brought this up in the chat earlier, the completion of the protected bike lane that, that terminates suddenly at 26th on Stout. And I'm wondering if that is um, kind of implicitly in a Stout two-way discussion. Thanks. Great. So, Brett, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I might jump in on the stout question, Karen. I think you might. I might need your help on the uh, 38th and blade question. Um, so yeah, on the we'll talk about the second one first. Um, uh, the stout street, yeah. So if we do a two-way conversion on on stout street, we would have the opportunity to relook at the type of facility bike bikeway facility that's on stout. Um, I think we can rest assured that there will be a bikeway facility continuing on stout, even if there is a two-way conversion. Um, point that two-way uh, conversion will allow us to uh, relook at that. Um, one great because yeah, because it is just, it is wide enough to imagine a Broadway-style two-way cycle track. And if we're looking at changes on Champa, where there's already a bike lane, um, let, let's think big about a cycle track on on Stout because it's just an embarrassment of width to work with. Sure, sure. And I will add on on the Stout Street conversion. Um, what you'll see in the what you'll see in the uh, survey is that uh, Stout is treated a little bit differently than the other two-way conversions. Stout does have um, design money um, to, to design a two-way conversion and that project uh, will also be moving forward soon. Uh, what's, in the, what's in the survey right now for prioritization is, do we want some of the existing current funds that we have to use to be put towards construction of that? Um, uh, construction of that design funds. If that's not the case, uh, future CIP funds will likely be pursued at some point in the future for that. So just a note on how stout is different than the other two-way conversions. Karen, um, do you think you can um, speak to Joel's question about 38th and Blake? So Joel, I know 38th and Blake itself, um, the underpass, et cetera, as you well know, is a very long-term project, but it, I think you are asking specifically about the intersections uh, coming up from 38th and Blake along Downing. Um, and I, that's something I think we need to dive into a little bit more in terms of getting an answer for you as to you know what's included, what's not included, and why those aren't included, but that's something that we can circle back with you on. Um, am I understanding your question correctly? Yes, yes. Um, the, the because the two street grids meet, uh, of course, and um, right. Uh, it's really the the five point side of Downing mm -hmm. where all the funny angles happen. There were some right. good drawings for each and every one of those, and uh, I, I don't think most of them have been implemented yet. But squaring things off, as you know, slows people down, has safer okay. turns, etc. I do know that we have. Uh, one, if not two of those intersections is got um, some work with a mill levy for signal rebuild. And we will, we're working to implement those changes at two. I can't dig them out of my head. Brett's nodding, so he probably remembers them. Um, offhand, I have too much information in my head and it doesn't stay there. Sure. Um, but we're still working on those, so I don't want to say, oh, we're definitively doing these, but we're working on two, right? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, going on down the line, Joel, so Downing and 37th Ave, there were some changes that were made there uh, that the, actually the developer helped to do to square off that intersection per kind of some of your comments there. Um, 35th and Lawrence, same thing. Um, there are, like Karen mentioned, um, a mill levy signal rebuild project, um, mill, specifically mill 26 happening along Downing and that will be at Bruce Randolph in Downing. It will be- We're, we're playing around with one more to see if we can make it a little bit better. Bruce Randolph is the one I was thinking of though, Brad. Yep, um, yep. I feel like so, there's one more that we're trying to play around with. 
Yeah. So they're, they're, what I'm hearing is they're they're all intended, whether one project or another, or whatever another gets them done. Uh, th they may all be intended, but not. We don't have action items on all of them. I would say um, they're they're all on our radar, and we're working on them. They're um, they're they're as you know a bit challenging, but I think that's a good point, and we'll we'll take that note, and we'll we'll dive in a little bit deeper and look. Um, at some of those. Thank you. Thank you. It's very good news that they're all intended. Um, and I want to, I know we have, Robbie, I've got your hand, but I want to um, go back to, um, let's see, she's still there. Yes, Walisha was first and then, so we'll go to Walisha and then we'll hop up to you, Robbie. Uh, thank you again. Uh, the First question I have is the Five Point Plaza. Is that a permanent and it's near done as one of your projects? Uh, Brett, I, I'm hoping that you we've the big picture is that that is happening off. That's not something that we're asking for prioritization. That's something that's moving in a shorter time frame. So I'm going to let Brett jump in. Yeah. To that. Yeah. So that that's one that is moving forward. As, as a result of the NTMP, uh, five points in NTMP, just like the other NTMP projects. Um, to answer your question, um, the one that's being, the, the, the version of it that's being implemented this year is uh, more like a flex post and paint version. So certainly as, as with all of our projects, we monitor it over time. If we've created a more unsafe condition or something of that nature, we certainly have the ability, it's something that we did not foresee. Um, we don't foresee that, but if it's something that we do not foresee and we feel like we need to take it out, it's a lot easier to do that with the flex post and paint version that's happening this year. So Brett, do you, um, do you want to explain a little bit those flex posts? If you haven't seen them, they're in downtown for bike lanes and they're really just in the ground and you can pull them up and move them you're not rebuilding all your curb and your gutter and your drainage you're doing it's a pretty quick and easy um change that is it's called a flex post but it's also pretty flexible in that you can unbolt it and move it take it away put it back etc do you want to explain that a little bit more yeah um so what we're talking about is um, flex post paint versus putting concrete out there, um, you know, and, and, and a much more permanent condition. The flex post and paint are the, the white candlesticks, sometimes people call them, that are bolted into the pavement along with striping, right? And then other than that, it will just be a street mural that's, that's, that's paint. So, so theoretically, yes, all those things are temporary kind of pilot materials in nature um, versus a more permanent construction, which that's not what's happening this year. No, no, but, no. Let me, yeah. let me interrupt you. Not permanent on the structural side. I mean, permanent as it's a completed project that's going forward. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And so that's something that will continue to monitor, as Brett said, if, if something is, if we create a less desirable situation in terms of safety for pedestrians and folks uh, in their cars, we would either modify it, remove it. If it's something that really improves safety, we would look for opportunity to make that permanent with, cur with moving the curb and you know, creating it, that change in concrete. That's something that takes a bit longer to implement and costs a bit more money, but that's something that we would have that continued conversation both with the community and in terms of getting data that helps us understand the benefits and challenges. Is that right, Brett? That's right. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And my other question is, uh, we're in a redistricting uh, they're, re they're, they're rezoning. So all these near, near uh, projects that you're implementing about, if you're not in the district anymore, say for instance, this 
remapping of the district does not include downtown and these near uh near term projects are being i mean are they going to still go forward even with the redistricting of the zone i mean these are uh projections of things that are to come but they sound more like they're actually being moving forward mm -hmm. and how can this be moving forward on the near term projects if in this moment in time we're getting ready to change the district that's a great question and really the district boundaries don't have any impact on the projects that we're moving forward it has the the neighborhood boundaries don't change what council district you're in doesn't affect whether we're going to continue to work in an area we balance our work throughout the city so that we're trying to invest equally across the city um, so whether downtown is part of this or not our meetings are open. If you don't live in this district, you're still allowed to come to this meeting and provide your feedback. And the, as I said, the neighborhood boundaries don't change with council district boundaries. So we've got um, community input and have years of community input on these projects as we kind of laid out that we've been uh, having conversations with the community and District boundaries have changed before um, this, and they'll change again. It's something that, that that change happens. It's really the district boundaries of council district boundaries change to try to balance the number of people in each district, but it doesn't change the work that we in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure or any of the other departments do across the city. It just changes who we're communicating to in the council office because if the council office changes, but it doesn't change your neighborhood boundaries. It doesn't change your opportunity to be engaged and it doesn't change the work that we do or our project priorities. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, but that, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm kind of complex with that. If there's gonna be a change in the district of how the budgeting is going to move forward with making a impact to the community. Uh, Wilton, you're saying that you're looking to make that a one lane street to add a bike lane. Although that sounds great, that street is pretty congested once you hit Park Avenue going towards Downey. So that I, it's, it's just some things that aren't, I don't know, it just doesn't sound right to me, which I just had to ask if we're in a rezoning of the district. So these things are still going to go forward, even if the budget doesn't include that um, new, new line for the, the new area. So okay. Okay. So let me um, let me stop for one second and say the funding for this project is Riley. If you can go back to the map for Northeast Downtown, the funding for this project, this projects and the priorities that we're talking about, is defined by the map from the Northeast Downtown Next Steps. It doesn't matter what district it's in; it's defined by this map. Um, the dis whatever happens with the district, it doesn't change the boundaries of this, the funding available for this work. These boundaries that you see on your screen now, that it could be in five different districts. It wouldn't be, but if it were in five different districts, it doesn't change the availability of funding for projects in this defined area based on the Northeast Downtown Next Step Study. Okay. And, and, and future, and all we're talking about with um, our survey of priorities is next steps of short-term projects for this area specifically that has identified, you know, a set amount of identified funding. That identified funding is helping 
uh, implement what we're working on, as Brett said, with the plaza and the bulb outs along Welton, as well as what we're asking for your feedback on for future short-term projects that we have some funding identified for. We don't have enough money to do all the projects in the short, all the short-term projects. And we certainly don't have funding for the long-term projects. We have additional funding to do some more short-term projects. And that's what we're asking for your feedback on to help us identify what additional projects we can do with the funding that exists that is bound by these boundaries on, on screen now, which is the five points neighborhood plus a little bit more. And none of that changes no matter how many council district, how the council district change maps change or do not change. And just for clarity, there's no rezoning involved with the council district change. It's just the lines from a, a governmental standpoint of what council district areas are in. And it may or may not affect this um, specific area. We don't know, but regardless of it, the funding identified is set for this area, no matter what council district it's in. Okay. And then as far as, like you said, the plaza is up and moving. So that's more or less, yep. is that going to be a sit down too, based on what you have from your last meeting in July? Uh, if there's a sit down area, is that going to affect the um, movement of RTD at all? Well, Alicia, hold on one second. Robbie has had her hand up for oh, quite sorry. a while. I want to I want to hop to Robbie and then we'll we'll pop back to your question about how the plaza will um, will change or will if it will impact anything with RTD. So Robbie, I'm gonna give you the mic. And real and quick, I do want to just plug as well as we're as we're chatting here. Feel free to go to the survey and be filling it out um, as you as you're in the background here. We'll be here for questions. But sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Robbie. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, I'm Robbie's partner. I'm David. Um, but yes, I've got a question about uh, some of the long term. Um, there's a 31st and 33rd Street bridge mentioned, right, for pedestrian and bicycle use. Just a quick question there. Um, do you know if those bridges would be designed to be a little bit more bicycle friendly? We've got some other bridges that are really because the, the, the bridges would be really, really helpful for both pedestrians and bikes. But I know the other one down at the art, the uh, light rail station or the heavy rail station is um, it's an elevator, right? You know, if you want to, yeah. um, <clears throat> which is makes it a little difficult for kind of routine use. So um, it's just a question if, if, if you know anything about kind of is this a, a, yeah. a roll up bridge or something like that? Thank you. So to be clear, future bridges at 31st or 33rd. Um, and David, sorry, I've, you know, I've got to work with what I've got you with uh sorry for calling you Robbie there but um if you've seen some of the recent studies that said we need to prioritize our existing infrastructure which is the 38th underpass and improving that and so 31st or 33rd bridges are very very long term because um we are we identified the need to focus on the 38th underpass and improving that first um, and that is a pretty massive project that's going to take a lot of resources and a vision for a future bridge is very high level at this point. And if and when we move forward with those, uh, it would we would have a full public process to discuss design uh, development and go through um, you know, constraints and opportunities that allow for different access, but we're, we're not in a space where we're talking about whether there's a bridge or an elevator, you know, if there's an elevator or a ramp or anything, because those are, are not currently projects, um, yeah, fair beyond long-term vision. No, that's great. And yes, uh, from behalf of Robbie and David, we're sharing one computer okay. here. So oh, not, okay. your not your fault. Thank you so much. No worries. And um, I know I've provided a pretty comprehensive email answer to somebody else. Yeah, I believe somebody else who had that question. If it was not you, um, 
shoot an email to me, karen.good at denvergov.org, and I will dig that up and shoot you the same response so you have the, the detail. But it's, it's what I just said. Um, and I have not been looking at chat for a bit, so I'm gonna um, hand it to Brett uh, if he has been looking at, um, at that, and then I'll take a minute to catch up on chat. Um, Brett, do you have anyone yeah. that you've seen? No, no worries. I think, um, you know, there was a couple clarifying questions about Stout Street. Uh, did, uh, from Paul, did I understand correctly that there is funding for the design work for a Stout Street two-way? Is that scheduled or in the works? Uh, I'll, short answer is it's in the works. We're currently assembling our design team um, that will be um, leading that design and public involvement effort. Uh, but yes, there is funding for the design of it. So again, what you're being asked in the survey is if you want to prioritize some of this money that we have currently for the construction of that two-way uh, two -way conversion. Um, so um, let's see some thanks for looking at the four-way stops in the neighborhood. Um, and we do have a question about 38th underpass from Rob. There's been lots of discussion about how to keep the underpass uh, maintained, cleaned, and well lit. And it is a, um, it's a challenge that we are constantly working on and it's, um, it, we don't have a perfect solution for that, but it's something we are aware is a challenge and we are continuing to work on. Um, so, sorry, I don't have a better answer for you there. Here's, yeah, here's one from Beth um, talking about multiple accidents in Stout and Champa, frequent traffic jams, and particularly bringing up um, unsafe crossings for pedestrians and bikes on 26th, which is a designated bike route that demands action. Um, I do want to note, uh, this is another project. Uh, we, we really just called out an exam, a sampling of projects that are moving forward. Um, but you're putting your finger on, on, on a project that is also moving forward, which is part of our community transportation network effort. Part of that is a neighborhood bikeway on 26th Street uh, between Blake Street and uh, Downing, if I'm not mistaken, Riley. Um, Washington. Yeah, that is, uh, that's moving forward uh, to, to construction next year, which is why it was on the slide. We were, we were focusing on this year, but. That is also moving forward. And that uh, design does include um, safer crossings for bikes and pedestrians um, for the use of some of the similar type stuff that we're talking about in this presentation. That in and of itself is its own uh, project, uh, which Riley has been doing a good job of leading. Uh, it's called the Community Transportation Network. And so if you want any um, more information on that, it is on our project website. All these projects are on our project website. And typically, if you Google City of Denver Community Transportation Network, um, you will get that website that you can look for the latest information on that project. Okay. And I well, just want to give minutes, everyone Karen. a heads up. Yeah, we have about five more minutes. And I want to see if there's anyone that has not had a chance to ask a question um, that would like to ask that. We have some, some more comments about um, Stout and Champa. Um, so we hear you um, and we've got that recorded and noted, but are there any folks that have questions about something different, um, something that we have not talked about uh, just so that we have a chance to catch folks in the next uh, couple minutes? Yeah, even if it is on the survey and the kind of functionality of it, we're here to help. Yeah, we're hoping that some of you have taken this opportunity to jump on the survey and start recording. Um, everyone's always well intentioned to say, oh, I'll just do that later. Uh, if you can think about doing that now, uh, because later, uh, having long deadlines isn't always helpful. Make sure, try to do that now if you can while it's fresh. Uh, you won't have to have it red flagged in your, on your list somewhere or in your email inbox. You can just jump on that now. Um, I feel like I'm selling Ginsu knives for only 
you can do the survey and uh, no, just kidding. Uh, let's see, a bunch of folks have mentioned four-way stops at different locations. Um, so, and some comments, thank you, John, uh, took the survey, it was easy and fast. And if there's something that you, um, I think we've said this before, if there's an area that you're interested in a four-way stop that's not on the survey and is um, something that you are interested in uh, the city looking into, that's something where you can um, make a call to 311 or put something in through PocketGov if it's not something that's been identified already and not on Walnut because that's something that we are actively studying. Sure. And Joel, Joel just uh, mentioned a technical question, which we should probably address here. So um, yeah, on the survey, you don't need to rank all of those projects. If only, I think there's something like eight to 10 near-term projects. If only three of those really matter to you, go ahead and only put three of those in the ranking section. You don't need to uh, go through all of it. Sorry, we should have mentioned that before. Um, Yep. And Connor, I think you popped your camera on to ask a question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I live on Champa between uh, 32nd um, and Downing, and it's that curve that comes into the neighborhood. Um, mm. Constant, uh, the, the cars coming around that corner, there's a lot of acceleration. I've got dents in my front fence. There's been trees hit, cars are hit constantly. And I know that's not unique. I know everybody on, on these two one-way streets has their own you know, issues with sort of the same problem. So I wasn't sure if that falls under four-way stops as a solution in front of the community pool there. There was a rollover a couple of weeks ago. Um, daily people are turning left the wrong way in, you know, at the community pool, they're onto Champa. And that bottleneck coming out of, uh, you know, out of, you know, the neighborhood, uh, you know, the next neighborhood over. And it's the, it's sort of the main uh, kind of parkway into downtown. So I'm just curious if there's anything specific that's going to be addressed about that area, or if that just falls under four-way stops and crosswalks, or, because it is, I mean, everyone thinks their, their house problem is unique, uh, but it is kind of a unique street in the way that it does feed into the neighborhood. And that curve is just kind of crazy. So. That was, that was my question. Yeah, so um, Brett, I don't think NTMP had anything specific about that. Um, good, I'm getting uh, confirmation there. Well, I, I will say, so um, Connor, there is, NTMP does, while this isn't exactly, I don't think it exactly addresses what you're describing, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, there is, uh, we will be put, installing a rectangular rapid flashing beacon at 32nd and Champa to help facilitate better pedest safer pedestrian crossings across Champa to and from the pool there. Like I said, I'm not sure if that completely addresses your question of folks coming around that corner. Yeah. That yeah, you know, it's just, I literally, you know, every day I, I'm people prone to hyperbole, but it's three or four times a day I see a car yeah. turn left at the, you know, onto Champa the wrong way and start going that way. And yeah. again, I, you know, I'm sure people on Stout have similar problems and, you know, whatever. So I'm not trying to make my little corner special, but it's just really the, the thing that I see the most, so. So what I would recommend instead of, and this is for everyone, when you're putting something in on 311 or PocketGov, instead of asking for a specific solution, like I want a four-way stop at my intersection, describe the problem. And Connor, you know, if you typed out or, or told uh, one of our operators the problem of, um, you know, people coming to speed, um, people crashing into cars, et cetera, et cetera, and say traffic, you know, looking for opportunities to make it safer, and for traffic calming measures. That's always uh, really helpful for our area engineers when you provide the, the background and then they can dive in to the data and um, assess what the best methods of addressing the issues are. Um, and with that, I know we're just at time, it's seven o'clock. Um, if anyone has any questions, if we can, um, 
Riley pop to that the QR code and the email. I know it's really far away, I'm sorry, in the show, but if you have questions as you go through um, the survey, neighborhood.mobility at denvergov.org. If you have, we'd love to get your feedback on how this meeting went tonight. Please use your camera to grab the QR code from that. And I want to, I'm gonna give it to you, Brett, in two seconds, but I wanna thank everyone for really active conversation and really wonderful participation and for everyone being respectful and thoughtful. If folks have questions, Alicia, I know you might've had some follow-up questions email us at that neighborhood mobility at denvergov.org and we'll we'll follow up and try to answer that. And with that, Brett. Sure, thanks, Karen. Yeah, just repeating all that. Thank you again for all your time. This has been a really robust, very interesting, intriguing conversation for us. Um, as we mentioned, we will be posting this PowerPoint and uh, the survey link on, on our website. So you can always access it there. And uh, yeah, please share the link with your friends and family and neighbors. We want to get as many people's input on this as possible. Uh, definitely email neighborhood mobility, neighborhood.mobility at denvergov.org. That goes directly to one of us. And, uh, and if, we have, if you have any questions, and uh, hopefully we can get those answered. But thank you again for your time, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. See you, everyone. Thanks. Hey, if you haven't uh, killed the meeting yet, remember to copy and paste the chat. I can't do it as a participant, but one of you facilitators might be able to. It might be helpful for, helpful for you for later. I've already saved it. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you.